everyone. Okay, let me just get situated here. Thank you for joining me. And my name is Dr. Jenny Liu. I'm a board certified dermatologist here in Minneapolis, and I'm really excited to be doing La Roche Posay's YouTube Live for the first time here in honor of National Hydration Day. And so for those that, of you that joined me earlier um, with uh, Christy Castle and I, we talked a lot about dry skin and um, for her, especially as an athlete and a woman of color and the struggles that she have with dealing with dry and sensitive skin. But today I thought tonight I would go in more detail about the differences and how you should take care of your skin when it's dry versus dehydrated. And feel free to shoot me questions. Um, otherwise, I do have a list of questions that I'm going to be pulling up. So first of all, let's talk about the difference between dry and dehydrated skin. And the two, there are a lot of similarities, and I like to think of them as a spectrum, a long spectrum. But in dry skin, that is a really a skin type, just like somebody can have oily skin, combination skin. And dry skin, often one has a propensity to produce less lipids and oil, and we, our skin needs those important ingredients to form that healthy barrier. And when we lack those ingredients, our skin is more likely to actually lose water, and we call that transepidermal water loss. And in addition to genetics, often we do tend to lose more oil or production as we get older. So we see dry skin, often people that are born with dry skin, but also we try to, we tend to get more dry skin as we get older. Um, the signs or how we would diagnose somebody with dry skin often starts off at, at an earlier age, but often the skin would be flaky, dry, itchy, and often they're uh, very prone to developing dermatitis like eczema. Conversely, dehydrated skin is more of a temporary status where any skin type really can experience. And the dehydrated skin is more speaking to just water loss through the superficial layers of the skin, so through the epidermis. Now, dry skin, because of that uh, poor functioning skin barriers, definitely will get dehydrated. But oily skin individuals, combination skin, even normal skin individual, individuals can also get dehydrated. If, say, you are over cleansing, using too harsh of products, um, you know, sweating a lot, using a lot of hot water to wash your skin, um, sun can kind of dry all our skin as well. Um, a lot of people with oily skin have this misconception that because they produce a lot of oil, they might not need to moisturize as re regularly. And the converse is actually true. When you don't moisturize your oily skin, your skin actually perceives that water loss and will actually produce more oil or sebum to compensate for that perceived dryness. So the key here is really understanding your skin type and um, adapting good skincare habits to prevent um, either dry skin or to control your oily skin. Now, one of the most common questions that I got was how do you treat dry and irritated skin when you're treating acne? Because a lot of the acne products will dry out our skin just because of how they work. For example, benzoyl peroxide or retinoids, they tend to increase cellular turnover, kind of break down skin protein and lipids. Um, they work really well for acne, but indirectly will cause dry skin. So there are a couple ways you can manage that. And it really depends on the severity of your acne. But most commonly, patients with acne will be using various different forms of topical products. Retinoids for sure, because that's really helpful. And then also um, like a benzoyl peroxide or salicylic acid product. One of the ways you can cut down irritation is when you're using a benzoyl peroxide or a salicylic acid ingredient, um, switch to a cleanser formulation. We know that benzoyl peroxide, the, that active ingredient, is really good at fighting inflammatory acne, especially paired with a retinoid. However, benzoyl peroxide can cause a lot of irritation, dryness, and often can cause burning of the skin. We also have done studies and have found that benzoyl peroxide in various formulations are effective and cleanser form is just as effective as the leave-on product without all the added irritation. And the strength of benzoyl peroxide doesn't really matter. A 5% is just as effective as a 4% as a 10%. 
but the irritation does go up with increased concentration. So one of my favorite ways of using benzoyl peroxide is actually in a cleanser form. Leave it on for a couple of minutes while I brush my teeth and rinse that off. And then the other days, um, the other time that you're washing your face, since most of us like to cleanse twice a day, is to use a more gentle cleanser. And I really like this one for anyone that have dry, sensitive skin, and especially those who are using benzoyl peroxide or who are using and acne treatments because you will get dry. This Tularian Hydrating Cleanser has ceramides, niacinamide ingredients that will help to soothe our skin, but cleanse and won't strip our skin's natural oil. So that's one way. Another way is kind of change up how you use your retinoid. So retinoid we know is very, very helpful at preventing acne, helping to unclog pores, so blackheads or whiteheads over time really kind of help to shrink down the appearance of our pores also treat acne and also help with some of the discoloration and acne scars. So really retinoids, everybody should be on unless um, you're pregnant. Um, but one of the downsides is that it can really cause a lot of irritation. So one way you can use your retinoid is kind of look at the type of retinoid you're using. So there are a lot of different types. Usually retinol over the counter is better for aging, less irritation, less effective for acne. Prescription retinoids are better for acne and for aging, but they tend to be more irritating. One of my favorite um, retinoids is actually Adapalene, and La roche Posay actually has one. I, just, I actually forgot it from, from my bathroom, but their Adapalene is very effective at treating acne and also has shown to be effective in anti-aging. Adapalene is one of the third generation retinoids, but it's very similar to tretinoin, kind of the gold standard retinoid that we've done studies on for acne as well as anti-aging. But it's a lot more, less irritating, a lot but better tolerated, and it tends to kind of absorb into the oil glands a little bit better. So switching up your retinoids can be helpful. And the key is you only want to put it on a pea size amount to your entire face at that time. And you want to make sure after cleansing your skin is dry before you put on the retinoid. If that pea size amounts are hard to um, spread, you can kind of dot it up over your face. You can even mix it with a moisturizer and spread it that way. Of course, being mindful of you know, not getting it on your eyelid because then you'll get really bad irritated eyelid dermatitis. So that's one way. And I recommend if you're new to using retinoids, starting off like even every third or fourth night and then gradually increases tolerated. Some people may only be able to tolerate it every other at night, and that's totally fine. Using it is definitely better than not using it. So another way is to do the sandwich method, meaning you, after washing your face, you can put on a moisturizer or like say a hydrating serum, um, and then put on your adapalene or your retinoid, and then put on your moisturizer. So layering your retinoid in between two hydrating um, products can limit the irritation. So we kind of touched up on how to treat your dry skin, um, the method of you know, changing up the products, the active ingredients in various formulations, and changing how you use your retinoid to limit the irritation. And then how you moisturize is very, very important. Now, if you are oily skinned, getting a little dry from the acne treatment, but do not desire a very thick, heavy moisturizer, then go with a lighter one that's gonna give you enough hydration. Um, but won't feel heavy. And one of my favorite ones is the Tularian Double Repair. This comes as a moisturizer as well as an SPF. And this one is very light. It's not greasy at all. And it will provide really great hydration throughout the day. It has ceramides and niacinamide as well as the famous probiotic spring water. In general, when you're shopping for moisturizers, you want to look at the active ingredient. Of course, the thicker the emollient, the better the, the it's more gonna it's gonna seal in that moisture to so prevent water loss, and it's better suited for those with more dry and sensitive skin. For those with more acne-prone skin, normal skin. Um, more oily skin, you want to look for ingredients that's gonna that's lighter, even water-based, and some of the active ingredients, including um, hyaluronic acid, glycerin, that's gonna help to draw more water to your skin, but not give you that heavy feel. Okay, so some of the other questions I got was um, kind of some of the actually this was this is a good segue to some of the other questions really um, regarding how to select ingredients for dry and dehydrated skin. 
So again, it really depends on your skin hydration status and what skin type you have. As I mentioned earlier, for dry skin individuals, because you have more of a defect in producing adequate amounts of lipid and oil, that dry skin tends to be more of a chronic issue. So really developing what I call gentle skin care habits, lifelong is super, super important. And what I mean by that is you want to cleanse you want to cleanse gently. So looking at more hydrating cleansers, things that's not going to strip your skin's natural oil. Anything that's really foamy, that suds can be a little bit too harsh. So cleansers and more of like a lotion formulations is less aggressive. You want to always use lukewarm water. And this is even true for when you're bathing. Um, you want to stick to comfortably warm, not super hot, because hot skin will cause more water to evaporate and dry out our skin. And just kind of speaking overall to just total body skincare, when you're bathing, you want to really only limit soap to your armpits and groin. That's true for mostly everybody. On a daily basis, we don't need to kind of scrub everywhere. The soap, depending on the type of soap or cleanser body wash you're using, it can, again, be very drying. And then right after the shower, really within seconds, when your skin is still damp, you want to pat your skin dry. This is the best time when your skin is damp to put on a moisturizer from head to toe. One of my favorite ones, and actually this is what I use all year round, especially in the winter, is actually the Lipicar AP Balm, which has glycerin, niacinamide, ceramides, and probiotic ingredients. And this is really great for eczema prone skin, which is what I have and what my daughter has. This is on the thicker side. So I do not recommend this for anyone that has um, oily skin, but they do make a lighter version of it if you are um, more normal to um, oily. This, I, I really love this one. So this, you by the way, can also use, I actually use this for my body and face all year round, especially during the winter. This is non-comedogenic which means it doesn't clog pores. But right after you, sh you shower, you want to you know, put a moisturizer from head to toe. So that's for your body. Now to your face, cleansing twice a day, that's fine. If you want to say in the morning, only splash some water on your skin because you did a really nice skincare routine in the evening, that's really good too. Um, basically, you want to avoid excessive cleansing because that will strip your skin's natural oil and cause more water loss. For dry skin individuals, you want to look for thicker formulations and look for ingredients like ceramides, glycerin, hyaluronic acid, niacinamide. These ingredients are going to help to repair your skin barrier, add more moisture back to your skin, and also help to draw water at the same time. Now, for individuals with more like oily skin, but tends to get more dehydrated because of what you do, say if you're a thick for example, like Christy from earlier this morning, she's an athlete, so she sweats a lot. She's under the sun a lot. Then you want to look for more water-based formulations that are a little bit lighter, that's not going to be greasy. Again, here, I kind of start to see a theme because dry and dehydrated, dehydrated skin are very similar. But you want to look for a kind of um, glycerin um, and um, hyaluronic acid that's going to help draw water to your skin. And I really like them in forms of serums because serums are more concentrated and more potent and they're a little bit liquidy and less thick on your skin. So that's another great way to um, combat dryness and, and prevent and per, uh, provide hydration. Okay. So we kind of touched on that. And then um, one of the other question is, how do you prevent kind of dry skin or water loss during, um, you know, kind of hot, um, um, warmer months, which is kind of really important now, especially as we're in the summertime. So in the summer, we tend to just, you know, sweat more and people tend to produce more oil because of the sweating. And so one thing you can definitely consider is stretching up your skincare routine depending on the season. So in the summertime, if you have dry and oily skin, you can consider adding in a less stretching out, say if you're using a creamier cleanser, a creamier cleanser in the um in the wintertime, switching to one that it is a little bit more foamy, that you give you a more cleaner feel. And again, changing up your moisturizer to a lighter one. That will be really helpful. 
Um, another way you can add switch up your ingredients is looking at the sunscreen that you're using because we get a lot more sun now in the summertime. And even though sunscreen should really be worn all year round, it is especially important during the summertime and reapplication is really important. And for a lot of us that want kind of that mattifying um, look, especially those with oily skin, look for sunscreens that are formulated for kind of those kind of skin types. And La Roche Posay, their Anhelios line has one of my few, there's a bunch from this line, I just brought one that I'm currently using, but their Anhelio line has lots of different types of chemical as well as mineral and even tinted mineral sunscreen that is super, super cosmetically elegant. It doesn't give you that white cast look when you put on your skin and literally absorbs within minutes and it's pretty mattifying. They, um, the Effaclair Matte is also another moisturizer that helps to control oil. That one doesn't have um, SPF in it though. So that's another way to not only prevent sun damage, but also to kind of prevent um, water loss through, of, um, of, through the superficial layers of your skin. Okay, so let's, I'm going to just see if there are any questions here that you guys may have. Okay, please feel free to type any questions that you may have. I be happy to answer them as we go. Um, so there is a question that is um, somewhat related to a kind of dehydrated skincare. Um, a lot of people ask about hyperpigmentation, and that is a very common concern that we get as dermatologists. And the ingredients you want to look for for treating hyperpigmentation, well, let me take a step back. First of all, you want to address the cause of your hyperpigmentation. So whether that's acne or say eczema, you want to treat those first and foremost. A lot of the treatments for eczema or acne will actually help with your hyperpigmentation. Now, if you are more on the darker skin, so if it's Patrick say skin type three, four, five, six, you have more color to your skin. And so you're more likely to hyperpigment. In addition, the hyperpigmentation is going to last a little bit longer than somebody who is say, more fair skin. So it's important to treat the underlying condition and then also prevent further darkening of your hyperpigmented spots, which is really some protection. And we now know that Sun, you know, ultraviolet radiation plays a huge role in that, but also visible light. So as I'm talking to you, the blue light emitted from my computer, from my light bulbs, from my iPhone, that will play a strong role in perpetuating the hyperpigmentation, especially if you have darker skin. And the really only effective way to kind of block that visible light is iron oxide, which is often found in tinted sunscreen. So tinted sunscreen every single day, hands down and they've even actually looked at studies by just wearing sunscreen alone that will help with lightens of the dark spots and then we talk about treatment so there are different couple ways of treating hyperpigmentation number one is using a retinoid like we talked about earlier that helps to exfoliate your skin remove some of the pigment over time another way that um, another ingredient that you want to look for are kind of alpha hydroxy acids, which is another chemical exfoliant, for example, like glycolic acid, lactic acid, that will again stimulate cellular turnover and kind of remove some of the pigment. In addition, for those that have um, dehydrated skin, um, one of the things that leads to um, that that dehydrated skin leads to is actually retention of dead skin. So our skin actually needs a certain amount of hydration to properly exfoliate. When that doesn't happen, that dead skin will are more is more likely to be retained on, our, on the epidermis. And so actually a way to test whether your skin is dehydrated or not is to pinch your skin together and you, you kind of can easily see some fine lines and accentuation of wrinkles that is telling us that telling you that your skin is dehydrated. And other ways you can tell is, you know, if you ever wash your face and you don't moisturize that tight feel, that's another sign. And also just fine lines and wrinkles are is more accentuated when your skin is dehydrated. So dehydrated skin often will have a dull appearance. And one way to remove that dullness that will also help with your hyperpigmentation is to use an exfoliating um, ingredient, active ingredient like hyaluronic acid, salicylic acid, um, to not only remove some of the dullness, but also hyaluronic acid, salicylic acid, sorry, um, 
alpha hydroxy acids and salicylic acids will help with exfoliation. And that AHAs is actually another humectant. So over time will actually help to draw water to your skin. So help to actually prevent hydration. So in here, you're getting kind of two, um, two benefits, not only removing some of the dullness, helping to exfoliate so your skin will look more healthy and glowy, but also over time, remove some of the pigment. One of the products that you can consider using is the La Roche-Posay Pore Minimizer, which contains a combination of alpha hydroxy acids, salicylic acids, as well as hyaluronic acid to help hydrate your skin, remove dullness. And also you have a little bit of the salicylic acid in there that helps to go into your oil glands, help with comedones, so blackheads and whiteheads. And over time, because you're getting rid of that clogged pore, it will shrink down the appearance of your pores. All right, okay, let's see. So let's talk about how you want to um, treat your skin for um, dryness. So skincare routine for those with, um, for like hydrating skincare. So one kind of going back to what I mentioned earlier, how to have an effective and simple skincare routine for those with dry skin or those who desire more hydration in your skincare routine. So number one, no more cleansing than twice a day. And in the morning, if you want to just wash with water, that's very acceptable. And some people with really sensitive skin and dry skin, um, you don't want to over cleanse because that oil on our skin is in kind of a protective mechanism. Again, if you are going to cleanse, at least stick to a dental cleanser, like, like the two-layer um, two hydrating cleanser. Two, add in a hydrating serum, like I mentioned, or even adding in an antioxidant serum. I am a big fan of vitamin C. Vitamin C does many things. It helps to prevent aging, prevent sun damage, helps to lighten up dark spots, and also helps with collagen production. Adding in a hydrating serum, like the one I mentioned earlier, that contains active ingredients like hyaluronic acid is going to be really helpful. And then moisturizing. So one of the moisturizers that I really like that actually I have been using, and for those who follow me, I put this on my skincare routine a while back on my Instagram, is this Tularian um, Smoothing Repair Moisturizer. This is a little bit more heavy duty. And for me, ever since COVID, needing to wear surgical masks all the time, that moisture and occlusion really dries out my skin and the lower half of the face. So what I will do is I will actually just make a, a pump of this and literally just put it all over my lower half of the face. And I, I find this to be very soothing. And the active ingredients in here, one of them is called neurosensine, which is a dipeptide that our skin naturally makes um, to calm down inflammation. So if you have dry or dehydrated skin, if you are, have uh, you want to use a moisturizer. Now, if you have more oily skin, a lighter moisturizer is enough. And you can even look for, say, a moisturizer and a sunscreen combined in one, um, kind of just for ease and simplicity. But if you are on the drier side, then adding in a more hydrating moisturizer followed by sunscreen is going to be really helpful. And then in the evening, you want to do a good job of removing dirt and makeup, but not overly um, aggressively clean. And so what I mean by that is you can consider using micellar water, which is basically droplets of soap in the water formulation. And this is very gentle. It can remove lots of makeup and dirt. And this is what I use to cleanse at night. And so I actually do a little bit of double cleansing. I use that to first remove my makeup and then I will go in with a gentle cleanser to kind of finish off the rest of my face and to remove what's left over. And then at night, again, depending on your skin concerns, if you are using any sort of medications for acne or say for hyperpigmentation, go ahead and put that on. And then you want to put on your retinoid and then your moisturizer. Now, the one thing I always get asked about is the kind of what should be the steps? You know, what should you apply first and what should you finish off with? In general, with regard to skincare, the routine should really be from lightest um, texture or formulation to the thickest. Because if you say, if you put on Vaseline first, any sort of serum is not going to get absorbed past your skin, so it's not going to work. So you always want to cleanse any sort of light serum. So cleanse tone if you do that serum 
moisturizer, and then sunscreen should be the last thing you put on your skin and then makeup over your sunscreen. In the evening, it should be cleanse, um, any medications that you may be using for acne. And then here, it really depends on your personal preference, but you could either do your hydrating serum or your hyaluronic acid serum, then your retinoid or your retina first, and then your hydrating serum, and then lastly, your moisturizer. So I think that pretty much covers all of the questions that we, I got earlier. And if you have any more, definitely feel free to comment below. I'm gonna to try to see if I can answer some of those. And if you have um, any other questions, feel free to check out my Instagram account at derm.talk. And today I'm actually par partnering with LaRoche. We're gonna be giving away um, a set of the Tularian products to five lucky winners. So go ahead and head over to my account. You can enter, learn where you can enter. And if you enjoy educational content like this or just skincare topics, dermatology topics, definitely head over to my Instagram and I frequently will post about um, tips regarding skincare and skin concerns and derm topics in general. So thank you so much for watching and hopefully we will see you guys next time.